Hey guys, what's up? Eddie Alho here with KissAnalog.com. All right, a continuation with our project, our Class A Olive amplifier. I left one of the boards in the house. I've got some parts. I'm going to show you. I got some new parts in, and uh, yeah, pretty inexpensive. I'll put a link down below uh, in the description, maybe on the video here, how much I cost me to buy these. But yeah, they're pretty cheap. They came fast, faster than I thought. And, uh, yeah, I've been using my amp pro meter. <laughs> I really like it. Uh, anyway, side note. But So, guys, what I have today in the video is I'm going to show you real quickly the parts that I got. But I'm going to show you the schematic that I built in MicroCap. All right? And let's take a look at that and see what you guys think. All right. A quick update on the parts. All right, guys, I got some replacement parts. See these? These are original capacitors. These are larger in diameter but they are shorter but they are also Panasonic and this I think uh, I'm gonna double check but that series is supposed to be higher quality than this series and they do fit on the board flush and this is a Nichicon you know basically compared to Panasonic and this guy here is what they call the fine gold or, or audio grade so that's supposed to be a really nice cap I'll put that in the signal path and then I have these large 3 watt metal film resistors and let me show you what I'm going to do see the I mean it's kind of overkill maybe but see here's original resistors they just didn't look like 3 watts and so here's the big guys and this is where the signal path comes in so um, and here's the other guy and I'll of course the power resistors you want to send them up off the board so the heat doesn't hurt damage the board over time and this was the original 1 ohm resistor I'm going to replace with these guys but I got two different ones see this guy and this guy and they both have the same bands on them I was just checking them out here see 1.1 1 .1 ohm and one point one ohm so yeah these guys are just slightly smaller than this one I think I might take these a little bit smaller guys this is a bigger one maybe I'll put the big one over here and take these slightly smaller ones they're just slightly and put two of them in parallel for the 0.47 and there's four of them here so I'll have eight resistors here so yeah I'll kind of I'll lift them and spread them out but I think I might do that just because I couldn't find the 0.47s well looks like I'm ready to build a board all right guys so this is the amplifier and micro cap uh, I've captured this schematic and I've got this little name up here at the top all of 560 watt amplifier. Now, here over on the left, we have our XLR input, positive and negative, okay? And then we have our RCA input. And I have a signal right here for simulation coming into the RCA, just between RCA and ground. So the plus XLR and the RCA join together here. They just have different in input impedance, but then they join and they go into the amp right here. And the XLR negative would have gone this way and through the capacitor up into this guy where the feedback comes from here and comes in and joins this input into the into the other side of our differential amplifier. So when we look at our circuit, this part right here is our first stage, our gain stage, okay? This guy up here on top, this transistor, these few parts is that current source. We can adjust that by changing this value of R6. Okay, the second stage is this big conglomeration. And the guy up on the top part, this big thing here is the current source for the, and it's power current source. So, you know, over here in the input, this is just a little bit of current, a few milliamps or something like that. Over here, a lot of current so we have big fats 
but it's just a current source, just like over here. But then we have our, our single-ended amplifier right here, these guys right here, okay? And then the output goes through all these resistors. These are all uh, three watt resistors in parallel and then out. And here's our eight ohm speaker. So our power rails right here are plus 34 volts. Down here's our minus 34 volts. So see minus to positive and then ground, then ground minus to positive. So it's, you know, it looks like two batteries in series, right? With the center point being the ground and we got a plus minus 34 volts. So of course this is ideal, you know, no ripple from input 60 or 50 hertz kind of thing. This is a nice solid power supply for our simulation of our amplifier. All right, let's go ahead and run a simulation. So come up here to analysis. Come down here to AC. Let's do the AC analysis. It's Alt 2 as well. See over here, Alt 2. So let's go ahead and run that. Now it comes up this window and up here shows a frequency range, number of points, you know, a bunch of stuff. Usually you only have to worry about these things and usually just this guy. We're going to go from one hertz to one megahertz. And down here is what we're going to look at. So you can add more things to look at uh, by hitting the add button right up here. But we can, and right here, this P, this column, this is the graph. So we're going to have graph number one. We're going to look at voltage out. Graph number two, we're going to look at dB voltage out. Now, before I run this, let's come up here and look at the stepping window. And I've got some stuff here. This is R14. If I go over here, I got C5. And say I said step it. So let's turn that off for now. Okay, when I close that window, it hasn't run anything. So I have to come up here to the green arrow. See, it says run F2, then hit that. Now look at this. The top one is window number one, and that's V out. And it just shows, if I hover over that, it says 9.1 volts, 9.11. And it looks pretty darn flat up until about 10K. And then it goes up and has this resonant peak. But man, look at this. It goes all the way out to two, three, 350 kilohertz. Well, 370 is what that says. Three, you know, it's 366, somewhere around there. That's a pretty wide band. That was another thing that this amplifier is, is meant to have a wide band. See, here's the resonance. This are our decibels. This is voltage out divided by voltage in. The decibels. So it's you know, 20 times the log of voltage out divided by voltage in. And it looks really flat, just like it did up here. And it curves up and comes down. So let's see if we can make that so it doesn't have such a resonant spike. Now, remember, I can come up here to the, see these side-by-side -side windows. Click on that. Shows me my schematic over here and shows me this. Okay, now what I want to do is zoom out of the schematic. Come up here and hit zoom out. I'm going to scroll over. So you kind of get most of the schematic in there. See the output comes back this way through the feedback and it has this capacitor network. Let me zoom in on that right there. See it comes back and it has 100k with a 10 picofarad strapped across it. So at high frequencies this guy starts to short out and the you know the RC value of this thing is going to be a pretty high frequency. So if we change the value of the C5, I think we can change the gain on this. So let's just see if that is the guy that we're gonna, you know, solve our little problem over here, okay? So when I come up here, I could close this X, rerun it, hit the step window, or I could come up here and hit the AC, and it just gives me li limits and it gives me stepping. Limits is, the first window and stepping is the second window. I'm going to hit stepping and there we go. There's our C5. So that's that 10 picofarad cap right there.
So it says 10 people fared to 40. Let's go to 100. And that'll, a bigger capacitor is going to lower the frequency where that's going to uh, have, a, you know, where that's going to lower the gain at a lower frequency. So let's say, okay, nothing happened because we have to go to this green arrow, hit that, and whoops, I know what I did. I only see one thing. So I, what I did, go back to stepping. I forgot to say step it. Yes. Once you set that up, you can set up all these tabs and it won't run it until you come over here and hit that. Step it. Yes. Okay. Now hit that again. Does not automatically do it. You have to come up. See that green arrow? Boom. Now, you know what? Let's look at, let's blow that up. So I just hit that window, zoomed in, and look at all these waveforms. If I go on each one of those, there's 100 people fared. If I try to pick them out, it'll tell me. See when I hover over it? If I go to this top one, 10 people fared. 20, 30, 40, 50. So look at those. So you know what? Let's go up here. See my cursor, AC. I'm gonna come down here to stepping again. And this time, let's get rid of some of those other guys. Let's just go to 50. Let's go to 60. Okay. And you know what? Let's say we don't even like the 10. We're gonna start off at 20. And we're gonna step it by 10 people fares right here. So let's say, okay. And where's my green arrow? Right there. Run that. Holy smokes. I think I made a mistake there. Let's go up to AC, stepping. Oh, I went 600. Sorry, I meant to go 60. That was, <laughs> that's a lot of values. Say, so, okay, let's run that again. See my green arrow? There you go. Wow, that looks cleaner. Okay, so if I hover, that says 20, 30, 40, and 50. So I, you know, I want it to be flat out 20K and a little bit further either. So you know what? I, I'm saying either 40 or 50. Choose one of those. 40 goes up just slightly. 50 is starting to drop off maybe a little bit too soon. So I might want to go with 40 picofarads. Maybe just slightly above, just, you know, in case of tolerance or whatever. But that looks a lot better, huh? So that's how you can use the stepping function to step through a bunch of values and see a lot of, uh, you know, iterations without having to change a value, rerun the schematic, change value, rerun the schematic. Okay, now I'm going to go up to this X. See the X right up here? Just going to close this window. Go back to the schematic. So I could change this if I want, but you know what? For now, I just want to come up to analysis, and I want to come down to this transient. There's the one up here that's going to give me a window, but I'm just going to do this guy. And then I get the voltage. See the voltage probe right there? Okay, what I want to do is... Scroll over here. I'm going to just zoom out a little bit. Okay, I'm going to come here to the input. Let's see what the input looks like. There's my input signal. Okay, now let's go look at the output signal. Scroll over and let's just click on this guy. So the output's down here red. See that? So right here, peak, if I hover, says 10.65. Blue one is right here. Now I can go up here and grab these cursors. Remember that? I hold my left mouse button down. I can scroll across and see this guy down here? This guy's checked. So that's where the cursor is. And and so he says 1.1 volt there. Now if I come down and hit the red one, it'll put the cursor on the red one and it says 10.87. If I hold uh, my right key down, or in my case, both mouse or both fingers on my Mac, but I think on a PC you'd hold your right finger down. 
Now I can scroll this guy, I can come down here to the bottom. Okay, I can also come up here and click on this window and put my left uh, cursor on one of them and my right cursor on the other one. So see my left one's right here. And then I can bring the right one right on top of it. And I can see, okay, 1.1, 10.8, 8. So if I go 10.88 divided by 1.1, go 20 times the log of that, it should give me gain of 20 dBs. So, hey guys, hope this was helpful. I got the schematic if you guys want it. I can send it out. And now we got a schematic. And we can play with it on our simulation before I even get a chance to build it. All right, guys, let me know what you think. Uh, this is going to be fun. I need to get some parts. I think the first power supply we put together once I pull out my soldering iron and get this thing put together. Uh, we'll do some testing on this. And then we'll start the power supply builds. I think we'll start off the Nelson Pass design, and then we'll try to see if we can make improvements from that. So any inputs, anything you guys want me to try, let me know. And if you want to copy that schematic, I'm sure there's a way, uh, Dropbox or something, that I can give a link and share that. So if you guys, I haven't done that before. So if you guys have done that, you know how to do it securely, let me know how to do it. Uh, another thing, I can send it out by email. So a couple of different ways to handle that one. But all right, guys, thanks for watching, and thanks, patrons, for the support. Thanks, everybody. And use the links below for the parts. It helps the support the channel. That's great. And thanks for watching. See you next time.